um, we mainly um, work with uh, high pledge airways and related technologies and are involved with um, all of the high pledge airways projects, um, airways family JavaScript, uh, and, uh, uh, and airways mobile agent for React Native. Um, Airways Agent Test Harness. We also do a lot of work with Ecopy, uh, where this talk will be mainly about. Um, so um, we've been working on a code with us opportunity from the government of British Columbia, uh, the creators of uh, Airways Cloud Agent Python. Um, and uh, the, the task was mainly to add support for W3C standard verifiable credentials to Airways Cloud Agent Python. Um, with uh, both support for non-CKP credentials, uh, but also support for zero-knowledge proof credentials using uh, BBS plus signatures. Um, so I'll just uh, share a bit on how it works, what we've done um, and what we stumbled upon. Um, and I do want to, 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 to disclaim that uh, we are no cryptographers uh, or expert on BBS. So if I'm saying things that are not correct please uh, or anything if you have questions in between just jump in uh, uh, interrupt me and uh, correct me um, so i'll share a bit on airways in the airways cloud agent python um, and then i'll go through a sort of process of okay how, how do we go from a simple json object uh, like the data we want to have uh, be able to be verifiable um, and get that to the state where we have an acknowledged presentation um, and then i'll share something about bbs in uh, bbs plus in airways um, so i think a lot of you already know uh, airways uh, and are familiar with it um, um, but it's it's a um, yeah i would say it's um, it, it, it's mainly focused around creating, uh, transmitting, and storing verifiable digital credentials. Um, and at the moment, uh, most agents, uh, Ares agents, mainly support uh, indie credentials. Um, with the exception of Airframers Go, we've been um, uh, using W3C credentials from the start. Um, and Indy has a lot to offer. Um, it has a lot of privacy uh, uh, preserving features out of the box. Um, and it makes a lot of sense to uh, yeah, not move away from such a nice thing that has all of the features before uh, there's a real good alternative. Um, and I think with BBS Plus, um, it's not quite there yet and there are features missing, but it has a lot to offer that uh, Indy has to offer out of the box. Um, test zero knowledge proofs, uh, you can do selective disclosure, um, signature blinding um, and uh, a, new, a sort of uh, link seat works. Revocation and predicates are not quite there yet, uh, but um, they will be. Um, so we also came after Indy was uh, uh, already out there. So we, we used that box. Um, and now with uh, WC credentials and BBS plus, we have to sort of take a step back and build everything that we already could do in Ecopy. We could already issue credentials uh, and, and present proof of them, uh, take a step back and basically implement the same, but now with the standards um, that were defined after Indy was created. Um, so um, for the ones that don't know, Airways Cloud Agent Python uh, is one of the uh, big open source uh, Airways agent frameworks. It already uh, supports Indy credentials. Um, and um, now we, we, we're, I'll talk a bit about adding W3C credentials to it. Um, so there's quite a lot that needs to happen to be able to um, move to W3C credentials. Um, we need a new iteration of the credential protocols. Um, the V1 protocols were um, somewhat indie focused um, and that meant it was not easy to use um, without indie credentials. Um, so by using the newer protocols, which are transport or credential format agnostic, uh, we can use indie credentials, but also other any credential format we, we, we like. Um, we need BBS plus support in Akapai and in Python. We need to be able to exchange um, um, JSON-LD credentials, and we need to be able to um, have a way to 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 negotiate the, the the proofs or the presentations that we want to create from credentials, um, 
for that, um, we've used presentation exchange, which is defined under uh, DIF, the Decentralized Identity Foundation. Um, we need support for linked data signatures, um, of course, to do with verify credentials. And as a starter, we went with uh, using DIT key as uh, issuer and subject identifiers, um, mainly because it's um, um, yeah, it's 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 easy because it doesn't require a ledger, so it will show the whole interaction we can do um, without um, needing to tackle the problem of publishing BLS keys to a ledger at the moment. Um, so um, I thought it would be nice. Maybe we could go from a very simple uh, JSON data object and uh, go through where all the steps that. Uh, uh, for me, it's showing, uh, it's recording. So uh, I, I hope it's okay. Um, so yeah, I'll go from JSON to a fully acknowledged presentation uh, in uh, Hyperledger Airways. Um, so we start with some simple JSON and I uh, picked uh, the, the, uh, some info about my colleague Kareem here. Um, and what we want to do is we just have some data in here. It's not, verifi it's not verifiable. I can't prove anything uh, with it. So um, yeah, let's start with first adding some uh, context to it. Um, it's with, with linked data context, with linked data, we can add uh, context to it. So we now see it's a person, we refer to schema.org and um, the other properties in here are defined uh, uh, at schema.org in a linked data context. That means um, when other machines uh, interpreted this, we know we are talking about uh, the same thing. Um, another thing where linked data becomes really handy is that it has um, serialization algorithms um, defined, which means, um, especially when we uh, want to make it verifiable, there are standard practices that everyone that uses this can follow. So um, when we put a signature on it, we put the signature on the same data because if we uh, yeah, if we if we have um, if we have a different mechanism to get to where we want to put the signature on, then um, we can verify the data between different parties. Um, so now that we have defined it, we um, can make the data verifiable. Um, what we do is we we add a proof object to it. Um, in this case, ED two for five one nine signature, and um, I sign it with my key. Uh, in this case, it's uh, 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 with, with this key reference. Um, and this means now everyone uh, who I pass this object to can verify that this object is signed um, by this key. And um, uh, yeah, we have a verifiable data object. Um, so if we go a, a, a step back, uh, because we're talking about credentials here, and this is just linked data proofs, um, we'll extend the document to a verifiable credential. And um, what uh, it's just adding some extra context that we are talking about a verifiable credential, but the data inside it is still uh, the same as the initial example. Um, so now that we have the data and the credential we want to issue um, and we have the shape, um, we need to negotiate and exchange this credential. Um, and um, using the errors uh, uh, issue credential protocol v2 um, which now includes a, a registry to allow for different attachment formats we uh, can um, independent of uh, the credential format being used we can uh, exchange uh, the attachment so in the credentials is already a supported file well uh, using the hyperledge in the credential it's defined in an rfc and this means all right if you want to issue an indie credential you should uh, sent this data in this format to this uh, agent. Um, for uh, linked data, um, we defined a new one, which is a linked data proof uh, uh, thing. So there's an attachment format um, uh, that's, that's focused mainly on exchanging uh, linked data credentials. Um, so how we do it is we have uh, let's say I want to issue this credential to Kareem. Uh, I've put the data in it and I want to offer the credential. So I'll send him an offer credential message. And um, what we, 
what we do is we have a, a format identifier, which we also saw in the, the last slide. And uh, this allows to recognize the format being used. So we have a verifier credential detail and everyone knows, all right, so we're talking about double tree C credentials here. Um, and using uh, the ID property, we can match it to the attached DITCOM attachment. So um, we know in this uh, property, um, we, we have the value. Um, so normally we base 64 encoded it, but for the example, I will use uh, JSON. And as you can see over here, we, um, um, here's the credential. And this is mainly inspired by uh, the VCHTP API. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if you're familiar with it, but basically what you say is, all right, this is the credential I want to issue. We already defined this in the previous steps and uh, some extra information. Um, so uh, what we're talking about here is, all right, I want to issue you a BBS uh, credential and this is the shape of it. And um, yeah, um, and we, we can do some negotiation if uh, Kareem accepts my credential. Uh, he will just send a request for the same shape. If he doesn't, he will send me a proposal and inside the proposal, uh, he can make a counter offer. And, and we can do that process um, as long as we want, but let's say he accepts it, he sent me a request. And so um, after that, I can sign the credential, put my signature on it and um, finally send it to the, to the other party with an issue credential message. So I sent you a credential you requested. It's a linked data proof uh, verifiable credential. Um, and Kareem now has this in his wallet. So the next step is, um, yeah, okay. We, we want to prove this credential that's in his wallet now. Um, we can use the present proof protocol V2 for this. Um, and um, we, uh, have a, a, an attachment format that uses the diff presentation exchange um, as the way to communicate how we want to exchange this proof. Um, and from the service, the BBS signature that we uh, uh, issued in the next step looks like any uh, other signature, but um, it has some privacy enhancing features that we can uh, use for uh, uh, proving. So, um, we can derive a proof uh, from it, um, a zero knowledge proof, which uh, uh, allows it to select this encoder, signature blind, uh, binding. Um, and in theory, it could do uh, private holder binding predicates or revocation. But in the first iteration uh, that we implement right now and what's available with the tools that we used for it, um, those were not available yet. So at the moment, we um, can do selective disclosure and zero knowledge proofs mainly. Um, and instead of just showing uh, the signature as it was issued uh, to us, like we would do with a uh, non-CKP uh, ED24509 signature, for example, we can derive a proof. Um, and basically what we're doing is um, um, we, we show proof of knowledge of the signature and not show the signature itself. Um, same as with the issue credential, um, we have an attachment registry and in it, um, we use the presentation exchange format by diff. Um, so, uh, this one, um, and all right. So the first step is to define a presentation definition. And, um, from the credential we had previously, there were a few fields in it. We had the first name, a last name, an email and his gender. So the only thing we want to request from him is his email. So I make an email verification and to want to make sure your email is valid. Um, and what I can do on it is um, I can specify that, all right, you need to limit your disclosure. So you can only uh, send me the fields you requested. Um, and I want this fields from the credential. So I'd say, all right, in the object you sent me, I want the credential subject dot email field. And uh, the only format I support is BBS signature proof. So that you could modify this to what you support, but in this case, 
We just want this signature type with this field. Um, yeah, so same as with we put it in a presentation request, we can send this to the other party, specify, all right, we're talking about the diff presentation uh, definition. Um, and the holder, in this case, Karim, already has uh, this uh, credential um, from the issuance step in his wallet. So when he digests the, uh, the presentation definition and finds the, uh, the correct credential, this one, he, um, what he can do is he can create, he wants to create a new credential from it. Um, and um, the technique that uh, was introduced to do this with BBS plus signatures, I think that approves is by making use of linked data frames. And basically what we say is we can define an object and um, put it some, some sort of uh, over another object and we get the resulting uh, like object that, that only has a subset of the, the initial data. Um, so in this case, um, we need to uh, uh, reveal some, uh, some fields as the issuer and an issuance state because we need to create, um, um, we need to issue an issuance state to do this because uh, otherwise we wouldn't have a valid verifiable credential. Um, and explicit says, okay, I don't want to disclose anything without explicitly uh, stating, uh, without explicitly mentioning it here. And what we also say is we want to disclose the email. Um, so if we if we use this frame, what we get out of it is um, um, a new uh, credential um, where only the email is disclosed. So um, the type uh, are, are also the closed. They uh, they will always be uh, disclosed. Um, let me see. Yeah, oh, what, uh, yeah, as Troy wanted to say, Eric Schremer goes, one of them we've implemented in Ekapai. It's not um, merged yet into main, but there's an open PR that uh, implements uh, most of the process as uh, defined here. Um, so, yeah, so we have uh, the right credential here, which uh, uses a, a signature proof, and this uh, can prove this to another party, and they can verify or write this. This claim email uh, is Kareem at animo.id is signed by uh, yeah, the, the signer that is uh, um, uh, as showcased in the verification method. Um, and they can verify it without seeing any of the other claims that were made in the initial document. Um, let me see. Yeah. And so if we take this all, we can combine it into a verifiable presentation we sent um, to uh, the other party. I've left the, the, the proof here in the presentation out of it because it became quite large, but um, we now have um, in, in the presentation, we can um, embed a presentation submission and the presentation submission basically uh, tells the, the verifier, all right, this is in this way, I um, um, su submitted the presentation to your request because the showcase, I, I, the thing I showed was a very simple presentation uh, exchange or definition. They can become um, really complex. Um, so in this way, I can say, all right, the, 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 uh, the thing you requested with ID email, I've attached a linked data proof, verifiable presentation, and you can find it, um, over here in this object in the, the first entry of the verifiable credential array. And this is the object as defined here. So we have the verifiable credential and in it is, is the selectively disclosed um, sub-credential that we, we, we um, generated on the fly as the request was made by the other party um, with only the email value uh, disclosed. Um, it's still missing some uh, uh, essential privacy enhancing features or not uh, like revocation um, is not there yet, but it, it's, it's for a lot of use cases, it's a must to, to be able to revoke credentials. There's no private holder binding, which means um, at the moment in, um, in, in the presentation we have here or the credential is um, we, we aren't able uh, to authenticate uh, whether um, 
uh, let's say if Kareem shows this credential to me, like, or did he pass this credential to someone else and is he showing it? Or um, is he actually the one that is holding the credential and is the owner of who it was issued to? We can do that by adding a credential subject ID, um, which contains a DID that he needs to authenticate with, but then we're, then we're disclosing a correlating identifier again. So um, that's still an essential uh, feature that, uh, yeah, that's missing uh, at the moment. Um, so this is a list, uh, just if you're uh, following along in the thing and you want to, uh, 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 yeah, look into itself. This is a list of all the specifications and a lot of reference implementations um, we've, uh, we've used to this. Um, and there were some challenges along the way. I mean, that's, that's what, what happens if you're working with new things, I guess. Um, and that some of the specifications are outdated or incomplete. Um, the specification on that key is very minimal. Um, or the BBS plus signatures um, specification leaves a lot open for interpretation. Um, and there's not a lot uh, of documents that combine the specs. So um, yeah, we've had some troubles with that. We needed to look a lot of the, uh, at the, the current implementations instead of the, uh, the documents that were there. Um, so um, I think um, it would help a lot to like make an update to uh, all the relevant specifications and create something like an implementer's guide. Um, we're trying to do that for uh, Hyperledger Airways with uh, an RFC to describe, okay, doing W3C credential exchange using BBS signatures in Hyperledger Airways. Um, however, a lot of things will probably need to be done on a lower level and are also fairly, um, uh, yeah, very useful outside of airways. A lot of these things are not airways problems, but more um, the specs we're using problems. Um, luckily, uh, Brent from Evernim joined me in this because he does have a lot of information uh, or a, lo a lot of knowledge about BBS and how it works under the hood and the cryptography. So um, that's definitely helping. Um, so, and another thing that um, really helps is um, we're using Airways Agent Test Harness to test for interoperability. Um, that's recently updated to support the V2 protocols and also uh, uh, BBS plus credentials. Um, and there's a lot of work going on to interoperability testing with Airways Framework Go. Um, I think that's a, a top priority or like a main goal because uh, Airs Framework Go hasn't been able to interrupt with the other Airs agents um, because they mainly focused on three by three C credentials. Um, with an addition of this to uh, of three by three C credentials to Ecopy, we can finally start uh, testing for interoperability. Um, so um, we've already done um, like an initial thing for Ecopy to do. Um, um, interoperability testing. Uh, and so soon, instead of just Ecopy, Ecopy, we will be able to do this for uh, hopefully Ecopy Air Framework Go. And um, so basically what we now can do is, uh, I'll slide ahead a bit, is, is we can run a test. And as you can see, we're um, running, uh, um, this is one Ecopy agent that um, exchanges in one test run, exchanges uh, in the credentials, um, it exchanges non-CKP uh, ED credentials and also exchanges BBS credentials. Um, and so we can now monitor, I think this is run every night on the master branch. So um, if we break anything, it will be directly uh, noticed um, and we can fix the intro problem between agents and make sure that uh, everything works um, as it should be. Um, I think hold on, I think maybe I'm the ones I'm aware of. Yes, I think there are people uh, definitely working on it, but it's just not um, like the other BBS stuff. And I will come to that in a second. Was really accessible. Like there's uh, uh, there's a real there's a, a library that you can add your wrappers to for language specific code. For example, Python, and you have uh, 
like TypeScript implementations, and that's not there yet. So it should definitely be possible. It's just not as accessible as the other features at the moment. Um, so um, yeah, we've had a lot of uh, like all the things that people, the other companies that, that work on this uh, have been working on that help a lot with it, like all the specs, all the implementations, uh, the libraries and, uh, and that. So thanks for that. Um, and one thing I'd want to show, and that's just to show how uh, accessible the libraries are set up already at the moment, is that uh, inside the slides, I um, added an interactive PBS issuance demo. Um, it took some time, but I, like not a long time to set this up. Um, and it's using the meta libraries, the open source meta libraries uh, that you can run in your browser using WebAssembly. Um, and you can tinker with it yourself if you go to uh, this URL, uh, it's the 25th slide. And what I can do here um, is, this is the, 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 the credential as we just issued it. Um, and I can live um, update it and um, it will in real time, it will here create a new credential and also verify it. Um, and what I can do is, um, this is the uh, interactive derivation to derive credentials is the credential we just issued in the previous slide. I can create uh, using a JSON-LD frame um, I can say here, all right, no, I don't want to disclose the email. I just want to yeah, have this gender and using this object, it will uh, in real time create the uh, PBS. And this is actual running here and it, it, you can uh, verify this in other agents, for example. Um, so if you want to fool around with it. Um, so, future I think is um, we do really want to have revocation we want to have bound signatures uh, predicates uh, and I think also support for blockchain bits uh, so not just that key but uh, more support um, and yeah we've only yeah just implemented a subset um, and I think this this is uh, the section, the, the session that will be held next uh, by Drummond and uh, uh, Brent about the next step for BBS will be a great like, all right, so we can do this now. Um, what, 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 how do we get to the next steps? Um, yeah, here's some resources if, uh, yeah, if you want to read more about it. Um, so are, are the questions, I've talked a lot. Uh, so I, I have one, uh, you said, you know, some implementation guide stuff for a few of the specs would help. Um, I was wondering if you had any specific feedback, you know, selfishly as a contributor to the presentation exchange specs, which I mean, you guys did a perfect job. Every piece of it was perfect um, in regard to the spec. I'm just curious if there's anything you ran into that was difficult there or if, you know, what we could do to help. Yeah, sure. I think. The presentation exchange was pretty well documented. I mean, it's a complex thing, but you want to do complex things. Um, so um, actually not that much on that one in specific. I think the most one is like, um, how do we combine it? Uh, like all the specs that can be like a lot of interpretation, open for interpretation. Um, or I think um, with the BBS plus spec, for example, there are just a few parts that, um, um, where not documented in the spec, like who, how do we do um, uh, with, uh, we need to have, um, we need to transform blank node identifiers to actual placeholder node identifiers and then transform that back before we do uh, like verify the signature. That's not documented in the spec at the moment and only uh, can be found in issues. I think su such things um, can really help to make it more accessible to other people to, to implement these things themselves. Um, yeah, and I think awesome. we, we can also do a job to, to, to help with that. Yeah, great. Well, I mean, I commend you on you know the integration of all these things. It's really, really cool to see it all come together. Thanks. Um, for the new people, I think it PBS stands for 
Bone. I don't know. Is there is there someone that knows oh. the the shortcut or the the acronym? It's three names, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> three inventors. It's yeah. always yeah. difficult. Those crypto Bone. names. Bone, Boyan, and Shachem. Thank you. Brent. Oh, look at that. Brent. I, I have very few things in my head, but that's one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah. D d don't, uh, as Stefan mentioned, we uh, didn't do this all by ourselves. We, we only did a small piece, mostly uh, uh, the, the, uh, the VC part, but like a lot of people from the BC Gulf worked on the V2 uh, protocols and the presentation exchange and a lot of things that was already there. Uh, so. Yeah, thanks for calling that out, Stephen. Yeah, we also did some work. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, Good. Um, so, any questions more? Um, yeah, it seems to be a, a circular link when you go to the website with the link you provided. It says check out the slides at https uh, iiw.amino.id. <laughs> Yeah, it brings right should. back to the same place. Yeah, yeah. That it happens. was just uh, it's it's convenient convenience uh, on the on the first slide. So so when I present this, it will be uh, available to everyone <coughs> to see. Ah, okay. Push yeah. the right. Yeah, you can use the arrows to to navigate. Dan, buddy, it's a link data proof. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any ongoing work regarding delegation? No, not at the moment. No. Do, are you working on that? Well, in, indirectly. So, so I will give a presentation about SNARK-based credentials and their delegation is quite easy, hopefully. Um, that will be after the BBS Plus talk. So I, I was just curious how, so how, would you quantify the effort that it took you to essentially use a new signature scheme and build it into the Akapai? Because if you have a kind of a standard process that explains this, I think that might be very interesting for researchers that just want to try another signature scheme for their projects, and uh, but still want to use uh, generic and standardized components like the Akapai. So yeah. can you maybe tell a bit about your experiences? I think for us, it was more work than will be for others because um, we, uh, uh, besides doing uh, a new signature suit, we also needed to add support for linked data signatures and verify our credentials and doing the whole exchange process. But if this is implemented, we implement it in such a way that if the crypto is supported in, in, in Python, you can use the crypto. You only have to implement the specific linked data proof signature suit. Uh, as specified by their specification, this uh, oh, yeah, which how do you uh, uh, serialize the data for signatures, all that stuff, but the rest can be reused. So, um, yeah, with if this is merged, it's only the the the, the lower level crypto and serialization stuff to add a new signature suit. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. So I, I would really be interested in a discussion after after the SNARK credentials if you want to join. Yeah, sure. All right, more questions. Um, if otherwise, I have a few questions like um, for you to. Um, um, is we're working on uh, this uh, BBS. Airways RFC, may we, uh, um, yeah, we, we don't have to do it all in the Airways RFC, but if there are things you would like to really see in such things, that, that would be helpful for others uh, working on this. Um, or also interesting, like, um, I think this is um, also that will come up during the next session about next step PBS, is but like, okay, what's, what's holding you back from um, implementing BBS Plus uh, in your solutions? Uh, I think the, the, uh, bound signatures or like uh, um, having, yeah, doing private uh, holder binding is a very important aspect for most. Uh, Stephen. So I have one, or Stephen, oh. you, you were. Oh, your hands yeah. Up. Yeah, I, I was going to um, uh, respond or, or, or ask Kyle 
<laughs> for more details. Um, you've talked about you're working on private holder binding, and but um, it's behind work on APIs. Just wondered um, two things really. Um, how can uh, the community can collaborate more so things can go faster? Um, and uh, how can we help you get that done? And sort of, do you have kind of ETAs for when that's going to happen, or or where is it on your roadmap? Um, that's uh, kind of tough at this point. I don't have ETAs. Um, yeah. I, from what I know, Mike is working on the underlying stuff, and most of the underlying crypto is implemented. Um, and then to be able to make the APIs work within the linked data signatures and stuff like that within a standard signature API is, is kind of where we're at at this point. Um, we're very careful to not like try and um, turn this into a bespoke system because it's just going to make it far harder to integrate with all the other libraries that exist within the ecosystem at this point. Um, so that's kind of where it's at in terms of how to contribute. Um, the best way is file issues on these types of things. Um, it, like that's how we've done things so far. So like within our repos, within the, the specification, um, those types of things, file issues. Um, but then also I think we should have a broader discussion about that during the next steps uh, discussion. I know Tobias will be there and um, you know we can kind of figure out what we want to do. Um, I don't think we're ready to commit to a timeline, but you know, if other people are willing to help and and share the same goals, you know, we're more than willing to collaborate to, to um, you know, hand things off to people and and help try and coordinate that. Hey, what, one, one question I have um, is, I know you the presentation exchange. Obviously, you're using it not not in the most trivial way. I mean, you're you're using you know the limit disclosure and the uh, constraints, and there's there's some features that you're using, which is cool. Uh, oddly enough, ahead of where we're at. Um, <laughs> sadly, but I, I'm curious, like, is anyone in the Aries community, either this implementation or others using some of the selection features, like in the idea that you might need multiple credentials, um, submitted, uh, for proofing, or you might want to select among sets, like, is, is any of that either implemented or planned? Do you mean, uh, like, um, composite proofs, uh, or... Um, just, well, even even in, in a simpler sense, right? Like like just the idea that you run into a verifier and and they request two things, right? At the same time, they say I need both of these types of, of uh, credentials that you will submit to me, or I need you to pick one of these three options, right? Like that sort of thing. I'm just curious if that flow or <clears throat> need has come up yet. Ooh, uh, I can grab that one, Timo, if you want. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. <laughs> um, We've had the luxury, uh, you know, Timo mentioned this at the start, we've had the luxury that, you know, the proof request um, functionality in Indy is pretty rich. We can ask for all sorts of combinations and we've used that liberally um, throughout our, our work. And, and one of the big pitches we make, I mean, this is why, um, you know, it's interesting going to BBS Plus because a couple of the pitches we make, the three sort of things that stick with business people is, um, I, I can say, uh, am I older than 19? Um, I can always revoke a credential <laughs> um, and that I can, in a single transaction, collect data from multiple uh, credentials at a time so that I can have very flexible use cases um, where I can do lots of things. And, and those things really resonate with um, the folks that, uh, you know, at the higher levels. And, and so to, and, and with Indy, we've been able to do those, although, you know, we, we know the limitations on, on that particular revocation. Um, we really don't want, uh, we know we can't do predicate proofs. We're okay with that. We really, but we absolutely plan and, and we quite like how presentation exchange gives us that ability to keep all, a lot of the other features using multiple credentials being able to do selective disclosure and, and things like that. We, and then the other one we talked about, um, that Kyle just talked about being able to um, um, blind the, uh, the subject uh, ID. So, so, so is, the answer, is, the, is the answer an understanding that, that some of those, not the predicate stuff, because I realize that, you know, even yeah, the underlying signature. That's a different issue. But, but the selection and like the multiple submission, that's already supported? You, got, you already do, um, doing that? <laughs> it's funny you say that. Um, 
I nod and say it probably is, but I'm not hands on with what um, Shanjat has done with um, it's certainly the intention and I think it's there, but I don't know how rich his um, his his um, his test cases are to, to, to demonstrate that, but I'll follow up with him and and follow up with you on that um, to 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 find out. It's certainly our intention. It would be there. And if it's not there yet, it will be. Oh, cool. I cool. think it's there, but. I also think maybe not like the, the real complex structures from the presentation exchange with from with the nested part, the, uh, but but I think the rest is 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 already there. Okay, interesting. Yeah, yeah, cool. Do you know about any mobile wallets that are also working on integrating this? Um, no, not that I'm aware of. Uh, I mean, we would like to get this in uh, uh, mobile wallets. Uh, we're working on Airstream with JavaScript and would like to get this in there um, sometime, um, which would also be able to run a React Native, but not that we're working on. I'm not sure maybe that Matter is working on this or something, but. Uh, we've got it working in our wallet, um, but it's our wallet is not. Um any form of AIP compliant. So you probably would run into interop concerns. Uh, oh yeah, and Christian makes a, a, a note that it would be uh, available in the Air Framework Go uh, for mobile. Yeah, I think so. I'm not I'm not sure what the, what the status is on what the mobile part supports, but yeah, probably. Um, the BPA is the, the business partner agent or? Um, yeah, BPA okay, is yeah. business partner agent. Yeah. Okay. Um, one of the things we'd love to see is um, since uh, Animo Solutions has been extremely important in doing this BBS plus work and big contributors to Aries um, JavaScript, it'd be nice if, um, you know, <laughs> people stepped up and said, hey, here's some funding to do uh, BBS plus inside. Uh, uh, Aries framework JavaScript. I'd love to see that happening. We, uh, it's, it's definitely something we'd love to see um, available. So I know a couple of guys that are pretty good at doing this stuff that might be able to uh, do some work on it. Um, I'm curious, you talked about DIDs uh, non uh, or, 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 you know, more active dids than did key. Um, it, it, now, I, as I understand it, you guys are working on one implementation using your stack. Is it a general thing in your implementation or, or, or a thing specific to your implementation or something in the general Aries stack that you all are um, hoping to, to do that? Like, and when do you think that might happen? That um, I, I think it's um, uh, verification with um, uh, Sigma recently did some work in Aeroscalate Agent Python to integrate uh, a, a, a general DIT resolver system. Um, and it also created plugins to connect it to a universal resolver. So with that in place, you can now um, uh, uh, start the universal resolver next to Ekapai. Um, and what you can do with that is we already integrate with that. So we can verify with any uh, 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 any DIT methods, as long as we can resolve it in the universal resolver and as long as the right keys are in there. So um, um, like ED keys are used uh, very often in other DIT methods. If that's in there, we can verify the credential with that. Um, I'm not sure, but BLS keys are not um, um, yeah, the, in that many DIT docs yet uh, that I've seen. Um, for issuance, we support DIT key with BLS keys and we also uh, can do um, issuance with did soft dits, but um, only with the ED keys that are in there. So no zero knowledge proofs. Um, so, but I think it's it's a more general airwise thing because um, yeah, you would you would like to have uh, interop on more than just uh, uh, the did soft or did key dits. Um, that's also, I think with, with Airs Framework Go, uh, I think that will be an, um, uh, an important thing to if we want to do they don't support uh, 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 indie at the moment so if you want to do anything besides uh, uh, that key 
uh, there would be made some agreement or interoperability thing to say, all right, so which ditch can we interrupt on? Um, just throwing this out there, we've been playing around with did ion, um, and it does work with BLS keys. Uh, so uh, you have to pass it in JWK form and I still have some work to do to actually write that into a draft, but there's some examples that you can work off within the BBS plus, um, or LDP BBS, uh, cool. So um, the, the, the big constraint, um, in, in Akapai. Uh, in particular has been, of course, that we were initially built on top of Indy. So the, the work that SIGPA has done to uh, enable a universal resolver access gives us access for reading for multiple. Um, I did a session yesterday about did Indy, and that's really where we've got to get to because Indy currently does not really support a generic um, did doc capability um, as defined by the new um, did doc, uh, did spec. And so that's being added to, to Indy. Um, but, but this whole idea of getting to a universal resolver, uh, we think Indy is going to be still remain pretty important, uh, in the space. So, so we really want to see that ability to write BLS keys into, um, you know, into Indy dids. Um, but, um, uh, you know, We'll go from there, but that's really the constraint right now is that there's just not enough um, write, um, did writing capability in Occupy to be able to write BLS keys in other places. Um, so uh, that's what we're working on in, in being able to do that. And good stuff there from the BPA project that um, Dominic just mentioned about getting did web into Occupy. Yeah, and Ian support would also be uh, pretty cool. So am I understanding this right, that uh, Macapai has really developed its own community at this point? You got a lot of people working on it. Yeah, there's a fair amount of stuff going on. <laughs> um, it, yeah. It's actually just Stephen Curran and I'm you know, it's, it's all behind the, the curtain there. You think that's just a small office, but he's got a whole warehouse of people back there. And it's a very global community, I got to say. <laughs> so uh, thanks for the nice presentation. I have a question about the version two protocols. You mentioned that yeah. This is one of the preconditions to use BBS plus for Arcapi or generally. Can you say something about uh, the support for the vision, uh, version two protocols uh, of other agents in the areas? And if it's already in the areas interoperable um, profile? Um, yeah, so it, it will be in the next, uh, uh, there's work, a lot of work going on for uh, quite some time already to uh, uh, define errors into a profile v2 um, and in it will be the v2 protocols um, and for example the did the bbs support won't be in the core intro profile but will be a sub target so um, it, it's not a requirement to uh, to be in trouble with other agents to support bbs um, and at the moment um, errors framework go has implemented it we just haven't um, uh, yeah, there's no interrupt testing. There will be work on that to do because probably, um, yeah, with, with such new things, if you both implement it, um, there will be things that need to be resolved. Um, besides that, I don't think the, oh, there are any of the other open source um, projects are working on it. Um, I know the .NET team has been working a lot, uh, Airstream.net to um, support BBS in .NET. And they, I think they're also working on it. I'm just not sure what the timeline will be to get that into um, into their open source uh, agent. Okay, thank you.